I'll still roll it today. I'm going to uh, call to order the uh, regular town council meeting for Tuesday, October the 13th, 2020. Uh, let's go ahead and start with a uh, moment of uh, silent reflection. Thank you. Uh, if you'll all please stand for the applicable please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have a lot to uh, go over today, um, so we'll uh, be as efficient as possible. Uh, first up on the agenda, we have a public hearing uh, on the wastewater treatment plant oxidation ditch cleaning project bond financing resolution. Um, do we need to go over anything, or is council familiar with the? Yeah, just I uh, just I'll say a couple words about it. Uh, we did discuss this at your September 14th meeting. Uh, David Rose and Roland Cooch with Davenport were here to. Uh, sorry, Roland one, but David was. To discuss this a little bit, the town is proposing to issue a general obligation bond up to eight hundred thousand dollars to be used to finance the oxidation and ditch project of the wastewater plant. Um, no action is required tonight. Um, this is just a public hearing. And, Davenport will be back at your November lunch meeting to uh, discuss the results of the uh, financing on the Are there any questions by council? Is there anyone here to speak for or against the uh, wastewater treatment plants oxidation ditch cleaning project bond financing solution? Yes, ma'am. I'm not here to speak for it, it's just the general comments. Okay, uh, if you would come up to the podium. To identify myself for the record? Uh, yes, please. Just make a habit of it. Sandra Pettis, a resident of the town of Uh I just have three uh, general comments. Uh, first of all, I'm glad that this work is being done. I'm sorry that we had to wait 24 years to get it done. Uh, but there are a couple of things that I want you to think about before the next November 9th meeting when you really consider approval of this uh, project. Uh, first of all, in looking at the documents that were posted, you have an estimated cost of since between seven hundred to $800,000 for the work. And while the town is borrowing $800,000, $800, that's not the total cost of the project. So I guess uh, for transparency's sake, I, my questions are, uh, right now, I know that you don't have what the, the debt servicing costs are going to be because you haven't gotten the bid yet. But, uh, for example, are the bond council fees included in that $800,000 that you're going to use as part of that, or is that something separate that will have to be paid out of the town's budget? Uh, once those numbers are obtained, I guess when the bids come in, it would be great if you could share that information for the town. Uh, cost estimates for the work itself between seven hundred eight hundred thousand dollars again. Given that the work has been delayed for so long, it's not beyond the realm of possibility that it will cost more. And your key assumptions, you indicate that the town has set aside nearly a hundred thousand dollars for debt service on the project. But what I'm still not clear on is that the same pot of money that you're proposing to cover any overages on actual costs, or do you have money somewhere else in the budget that hasn't yet been identified? On page three of the document that was posted again, you indicated the town can cover uh, these costs in, current, in the current year budget cycle. And what I want to implore you to think about is if you do have that money, if you could somehow embargo it in your budget so that it doesn't get spent on something else, and then you end up in a situation where there is a shortage of some kind. Uh, lastly, general obligation bonds are popular financing tools among governors. government. I actually own some municipal securities and I love them because they're secure and I'm guaranteed to get my money back. And while that's great from an investor's standpoint, 
uh, is not always great for residents in the issue in communities because when people run short of revenue, what they typically do is raise taxes. And so uh, what I hope that we will think about is right now, the county, the state, and I presume crew is suffering because of reduced tax revenues as a result of COVID. A lot of restaurants are closed. A lot of businesses uh, uh, are struggling right now. And so um, we don't want to really think about raising taxes, although that may be further down the road, but I ask that you really take a hard look at crew's finances and projected revenues for the next two fiscal years to make sure that you can do this without creating a tax burden on the citizens. So those are my comments. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, and uh, we can't get into the, uh, the details tonight, but uh, Brian, if you would reach out and just uh, get some uh, very specific questions, uh, so, uh, have a conversation. Uh, perfect. I'll get back in touch with you. I appreciate it. Um, are there any other uh, citizens who wish to speak for or against the um, project? Anyone else? Going once, twice, sold. Um, okay, so the public hearing is now closed. And we are now in our regular meeting. Uh, so I will need approval of minutes and agenda by council. Um, or first I'll ask, is there anything else that needs to be added to the agenda that's not already on there? Anyone have anything to add? Okay. <coughs> Hearing none. Are there any um, uh, adjustments to the minutes from either the regular meeting or the special call? Hearing none, I'll entertain the motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. And a second? I'll second. Okay, uh, all in favor? Uh -huh. Those are approved. Uh, public comment section. Uh, is there anyone who wishes to speak in the public comment section? Give you a mind, we'll have another one at the end of the meeting if you don't want to speak now. No one? Okay. Moving on, review of bills. Um, any questions about the bill sheet? Councilman Davis. I was looking over the bill sheet with the mayor and uh, just a couple of items. The Citizens Bank and Trust, I'm assuming it's a loan for the garbage trucks who are going back home. It's a pretty sizable payment. Do we, a, do we know how much is left over on that? Did something like find out later or are you going to give me that yeah, information later? All right. And then I brought this up to the mayor and, and actually one of the uh, Board of Supervisors members. <coughs> Down just about at the bottom under Nottoway County, there's a landfill fee. September 2020, the amount of $2,940.76. It's come to my attention that's a recurring cost that we're paying every month. And from what I've been told thus far, that's a fee that we get charged for our trucks to carry our garbage to the dump and dump it in the landfill. I've asked the mayor, I'm going to bring it up here so that everybody is aware, I'm a little confused how if every citizen in the town of Crew is a county taxpayer, why it is that we're, that we're providing the trucks and the men to pick up the garbage, why there's an additional charge to the town of Crew, which then we pass on, pass through to the citizens of the town of Crew, when they're already paying taxes, just like every other county citizen, to have their garbage dumped in the dump. So if we, in other words, if we terminated our garbage truck tomorrow, and people in the town had to carry their garbage to a dumpster site, it would cost them nothing. But because we live in the town of Crew, and because we've got workers and trucks to carry the trash, the town of Crew is, is dropping anywhere between the 2,900 here, I believe I saw one that's closer to 3,500, 3,600. My understanding is about $3 a household. So I'm a little confused as to why we would need to be paying that fee if everybody we're picking up the trash for is already a taxpaying citizen, not a county. So I would ask Brian, if possible, if you could get us some more information where you can know the answer to this question. Um, the, sh the short answer, I can't remember all this. There are 
lack of room to agreements on a lot of these type of services between the county and town. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think we do, but I would have to double check to do I don't think there's any written agreement on that. This is kind of like when we, the town pays for dispatching service with the uh, sheriff's office. You can make you can make somewhat of a testimony there. A lot of these shared services, there are no written agreements that specify what the town pays, whether we should be paying it for work. But with that said, those are all good arguments. But some of these things y'all may want to consider. Um, I always do try to talk to the surrounding jurisdictions about these type of shared services issues. Um, and I can certainly have a follow-up conversation uh, with, the, with the county uh, administrator to talk about these things. But some of these things may require you know, joint um, collaboration between the governing bodies. So it's something you may want to consider, not just this, but with other um, types of issues that can't be solved with just with the manager and administrators. It's having maybe a town, 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 county liaison committee where you have a, you know representatives from the governing bodies to talk about these type of issues after the managers talk. And we, and we have started some of the discussions somewhat. Supervisor Hort, I've, I've addressed it with him. I know that Phil and he had the, their, their town meeting here, town hall meeting here the other day. Um, so John is supposed to be, Supervisor Hort is supposed to be looking into that. I believe that Mayor Colburn's response was copy. Um, I think it's a little different with the garbage than it would be with, say, a dispatch in the police department. So we would technically have to pay a dispatch if we didn't have them doing it. Whereas our citizens are already paying for the trash. It's part of what they pay for their, their taxes for. So um, if you don't mind digging in that a little bit, I'll, I'll talk with Supervisor Rourke on the other end and see if he's able to find out any information. Thank you. I appreciate it. And if you would also want to reach out to the town of Blasco to see if they are in fact paying uh, a fee like that as well. Uh, and I thank uh, Councilman Davis for bringing that to, uh, to Council's attention. That said, if we're paying things that we shouldn't be paying, that's certainly something to, uh, to look into. Um, anything else on the, uh, on the bill sheet from Council? Okay, moving on. Uh, town Manager's report. Uh, you do have the report attached to your agenda packet, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have about that. Does Council have any questions for the um, town manager on the town manager's report? There's a significant number of things on there, and I believe that that is also posted online if anyone wanted to um, view that. Uh, no questions? Okay, moving on. Mayor's report. Uh, just one thing tonight. Uh, council will uh, have seen in the packet um, a, uh, a document uh, titled Meeting Rules. Um, as we um, become more open and, and allowed, you know, more discussion and encourage discussion from the public, we're at a point where we need to formalize some, uh, some policies and processes. Um, so these... Uh, Regarding uh, public comment, um, unless a health uh, just some uh, some new rules in place, unless a health condition prevents them from doing so, members of the public should approach the podium to address council uh, during the uh, during the public comment section. Uh, at the beginning of the public comment section, uh, the chair uh, will determine if a time limit for each speaker is necessary, and that uh, that ensures each member of the public has an opportunity to exercise his or her her First Amendment rights. Uh, and the town manager will have a binder to capture name and contact information for each individual addressing the council. Do we have that up there today, Brian? Uh, I believe that y'all have been putting out uh, sign up oh, sheets. Oh, sign up sheets. Okay, they're there on that blue chair because I had to move them off the. Uh, okay, and that's uh, regarding public comment. Regarding the agenda, um, basically, uh, as, as I uh, talked about earlier, uh, if you have something to add to the agenda, the appropriate time to do that is before we approve the agenda. Uh, and then, just regarding discussion of issues, and I think we'll get, uh, we'll really need to remember this as we get into deeper into the uh, agenda today. 
Um, no members uh, may speak until recognized by the chair. And again, this, these are set to, rules set to ensure that each member of council has an equal opportunity to speak. Uh, all discussion must be relevant to the immediate pending question, so not going off on tangents that aren't related. Uh, no member may speak a second time until, the, until every member who wishes to speak has had the opportunity to do so. Again, so we're not um, stepping on each other's toes. Uh, members should keep their comments concise. All, mar all remarks must be addressed to the chair, no cross debate, so no going back and forth against each other. And these all fall under uh, Robert's Rules of Order. Um, uh, debate must be uh, must address issues, uh, not personalities. No one is permitted to make personal attacks or question the motives of other speakers. When possible, the chair should let the floor alternate between those speaking in support and those speaking in opposition to the motion. Um, members may not disrupt the assembly, and rules of debate can be changed by a two-thirds vote. And finally, uh, council should remember that they have two tools at their disposal uh, to keep the meeting moving forward. The first is at any time during debate, a member of council may make a motion to move the pending question. Uh, once this happens, a second will be called for. If seconded, a vote will be taken, and if passed, debate ended. Uh, this is a valuable tool at your disposal for ensuring one or two overly verse members uh, don't drag it on. If the majority feel that everything that needs to be said has been said and on an issue, then they would see no need for a court debate. And the second uh, tool you have there is at any time a member of council may also make a motion to table the issue. If debate drags on uh, and more information is needed, this is a way to allow members to seek more information and continue the discussion to another meeting. Uh, any questions about those the new policies? <coughs> Perfect. And again, this isn't a, oh, Councilman Davis. It's more of a comment. Sure. Um, for the benefit of the folks in the audience, as well as those that will be watching this. One of the criticisms that gets laid out quite often in this county at several bodies of government is that by the time we get in a room like this and it comes time to make decisions that impact our citizens, our communities, our businesses, that either there's not enough time allotted to give a healthy debate over what those decisions are, or there's a rush to make that decision or the decision was made in a back room, on an email, on a telephone call, whatever the case might be. Whether that's the Board of Supervisors, Blackstone Town Council, Crew Town Council, I, I would simply stress that if we're not here to debate and use that as a tool to make the best decisions for the folks that are sitting out there and the folks out here in our neighborhoods, then I'm not exactly sure what the need to have these meetings really is if the decisions are getting made before we walk in here and we're simply voicing a vote. Um, you know, I know that Sue and I, we have a lot of fun going at each other and there's gonna be times when we're gonna have healthy debate. That needs to be a part of the discourse here. If you've watched anything on television today or yesterday, then you've seen that even within the halls in DC, there's lively debate that takes place in every form of government that we've got here. I would simply remind the mayor that if these rules step on the ability of council to partake in the business of the town because we don't have enough time or nobody wants to have the conversation, then there's something wrong with that. So. Thank you, Councilman Davis. And I will uh, uh, point out that nothing in these uh, new policies restricts the amount of debate that occurs. Uh, all it does is says that everyone has an equal opportunity to voice their opinions with no one individual or two individual members uh, monopolizing the, uh, the discussion. So it allows, for example, you to speak, and then someone else to speak, and then everyone to speak, and then you can speak again. So it, uh, it, it doesn't limit the debate, but it also, but it, um, uh, it, it makes it more conducive to everyone expressing their own views. As long as there's not a time limit. Oh, for council, absolutely. No, no time limit. I've got a question and a comment, Chair, Mayor. Councilman Reed. So, um, I'll go with the comment first. We don't have to be in this room to debate. If there's an issue that we know a vote is coming up on, we had plenty of time to discuss that before we come in here. That's my comment. Uh, the question, I thought we passed a resolution six or eight months ago to giving a five-minute uh, 
time limit for speakers. Isn't that already, is that already supposed to be enforced? Um, we did pass a resolution to give a time limit. Whether or not we implement that time limit is um, up to the discussion chair. How so? I'm sorry? How? How, how so? I thought we passed the resolution that public comment had five minutes to speak. I don't remember anything about that being subject to the chair. Okay, thank you. Um, is it or is it not, or is it? Uh, I don't believe it is. Or it, I, I believe that's up to discretion of the chair. Very well. Councilman Yates. I think at the end of the day, when we talk about these healthy debates discussion, the most important thing to remember is that we're here to serve those people. And if we're here to listen to what they, what their needs are, and it's our job to service them. We work for them. And I don't, that should never be forgotten. And I think that, you know, certainly at the county level, for me, um, I certainly feel that <clears throat> that is a, a, a problem. It's more than a concern. It's a problem at that level. And I feel like in, since we've started a new council, I think we've been doing an outstanding job, this is how I feel, at inviting the, the people to have a voice in their government, which is important. So, there you go. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, um, before, uh, anyone, uh, anyone else? I agree with Council Councilwoman Yates. I don't think that these guidelines are restricting our ability to hear from citizens who come to make comment. I do like the idea that we exercise some civility in giving everybody a chance to make a statement and taking turns in making the statements rather than talking over someone um, waiting to be recognized and I don't use what I see on TV always as a guideline for how I think I should behave. <laughs> um, we hope that all organizations set a good example, but it's really just about civility as to our citizens and to one another. Thank you, Councilman. Um, I concur with Ms. Stenson. I agree exactly. It's about civility. I mean, we don't need to we see what's going on in Washington, and I don't think anybody likes that. Um, just battling back and forth. We're here to get the job done and um, to serve the people. And we're not, <clears throat> I mean, I 100% I agree it needs to be civil. So being respectful of each other. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, anything, Councilman Foss? Um, I think it'll streamline healthy discussion and maintain organization. Okay. And Councilman Davis, you have another comment? I just was going to ask about the, because I wasn't here when you passed this resolution. Was that five minutes referring to council? Or was no. that five minutes referring public to public comment. Public, comment. public comment? Good enough. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Yates. I think that it's all good to have an outline of, of rules that we can, um, decorum that we can follow. However, I think that it's a guide not a line. In, I think it should be considered a guide, not a line in the sand. So if for some reason we have discussion where a citizen might need a little bit more time, I, I am much more comfortable as a council person allowing that citizen to voice the, to, to, to have their voice heard. And I, I understand that when we have large numbers of people show up that there's, there's a, more limitation than when we have few show up. But I think that we need to bear in mind that at the end of the day, we're about serving them and hearing them. Thank you, Councilman. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, and that is it for the Mayor's Report. Next up on the agenda, Town Attorney's Report. Yeah, thank you. And I apologize I did not get you all my general memorandum today. Um, I've been working on things, but nothing really new that you all don't know about. But certainly, if you all have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Any questions for the town attorney? Okay, hearing none. Uh, moving on to new business. Um, 
First item under the business, the new, new business, uh, town charter amendments, request to conduct a public hearing. Uh, town manager. Uh, yes, honorable uh, mayor, council. We, uh, if you remember at our last work session back in September, we kind of discussed structure, form, roles, government, the local government, um, and possible charter amendments. Um, as you know, the, the charter kind of is outlines how your local government functions. Um, it's granted by the General Assembly. Um, any amendments have to be go back to the General Assembly for consideration and their approval. And uh, based on that discussion, I, I went back and uh, put some recommendations together in terms of some of the things we had discussed. If you see in your packet, and I'll just kind of briefly try to go through these. Uh, under Chapter 1, I just included a section to be clear because I don't think it's mentioned anywhere in the charter, but we are uh, back, I believe, Peter said he found it was adopted back in the 20s, 100 years ago. But this is a council manager form of government, so in order to specifically list that in our charter, I thought it would be good, and that's just standard language as in other uh, cities and towns charter on form of government. So that we, the town that has the council manager form of government. Let's see if we go back here to section 3-1, something else we had talked about, your, your current structure, um, the terms are for two years and all at one time and all at large. Um, so one, one thing I suggested and I think you should consider is extending the terms to four years instead of two and have those staggered. Um, that will help create more continuity amongst the members of council. It will, uh, the current, the, in my opinion, the current two-year cycle, what's the, what's the word? Um, it, generally when is that much turnover that quickly, you can't see a lot of projects and initiatives come to fruition and you can every two years you can have a totally different change in the direction of things which does not promote good continuity of projects and initiatives, etc. So everywhere I've worked, the council has said four years and that generally promotes good stability across a longer time period. And these these terms are a lot of localities have staggered terms, so you can't potentially have <coughs> all of the council change over at once, which would, which would potentially create a lot of uh, unstability. So anyway, what I'm suggesting here is you change the terms to four years, have those staggered, and I think we had discussed last time the, the, a good way to do that, I believe, and, and Tess and I can double check the wording on this and do some wordsmithing if we need to, but um, obviously that, that would, any potential changes if you do want to do that would have to take effect the next uh, cycle, election cycle. So starting, if you look, beginning with the regular <coughs> election to be held on the first Tuesday in May of 2022, in terms of the mayor and council shall be given as followed. The mayor shall be elected to serve a term of four years, expiring June 30th, 2020. 26 and every four years thereafter. Four members of council who are elected with the highest number of votes shall serve a term of four years with each of the following June 30th, 2026, and every four years thereafter. The three members of council who are elected with the fewest number of votes shall serve two years each, expiring 2024 and every four years thereafter. And four just clarifies that the term of office shall commence on July 1st following the election, and the mayor and members of the council shall serve until their successors are elected or qualified. So that's kind of the election piece. So if I'm understanding you right, that if starting with that clean slate, three of the members of council are going to have to be either re elected or you will have newly elected at the end of that first two years. So you're going to have to hold a two-year election at the end of that. Am I understanding that right? So we hold an election. The next election, the largest yeah. portion will be for four years. That's right. The smaller portion will be for three years, and then we're going to have to hold the town election again. Two years. 
at two years. You, you would still have elections every two years, so just the, the, the four okay. people with the highest number of votes will serve four. That's not your stagger. And, then, okay. yeah, and that, that's the way you start it staggered that way. Uh, unless y'all know a better way to do it. I think that's the way it's working a lot of other yeah, charters. that's what I would say. Um, let's see, vacancies on council. We just went through this. Um, for simplicity, I just put vacancies on the council just to, to uh, clean it up a little bit according to the Code of Virginia, which is what you need to go by. Um, Let's see, powers and duties of mayor. I just stuck in he and the council shall see that the duties of the various town <coughs> appointed officers are fully performed. Just as clarification. And took out and made deputized assistant policemen as necessary to sort the of antiquated language there. Sorry, Bill. I was hoping to get deputized before that expired. Hey, I think it's real. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. It's put uh, there for a reason. It doesn't hurt anything for it to be there. And meetings of council, section uh, 3.7, that was a state code change years ago. It, it, state code requires two or more. Um, that's just a cleanup section. Council to fix salaries, and then we went back to council manager form of government and just took out and employees because council really set the salary of your five appointed positions now. The uh, town manager, town attorney, clerk, police chief, and town sergeant. Let's see, town manager, uh, that was back on appointment section 4.1, town council shall appoint a chief administrative officer, and it's uh, discussed the current wording in the town manager duties, they not existent, it's just, uh, and as Peter suggested, and it's in many other town and city charters, I thought it's generally a good idea to list kind of out the main duties of the town manager so there's no um, just so those are spelled out and there's there's no ambiguity <coughs> on what the duties of the town manager include. And those are pretty typical that's pretty typical wording within town and town and city charters of what the town and city manager does, which is already being done. And excuse me, I, I, that needs this those, those sections need to be uh, a number a little differently but anyway. Um, section 4.4, which is section 4.3, uh, council manager relationship. This is also generally in, in some of the town or city charters. Except for the purpose of inquiry, the mayor and council shall deal with the administrative service solely through the town manager. And neither the council nor the mayor shall have the authority to give orders to any subordinates of the town manager, either publicly or privately. We're getting back to the council manager from the government. Um, and also, mayor and council members not to succeed office of town manager. So the mayor and council members shall not be appointed as town manager manager during the term for which he has been elected, nor within one year after the exp expiration of his term. Let's see, chapter five, appointed officers. Uh, again, the town council shall appoint a town manager, a clerk, and, and here's the one of the bigger discussion debates uh, what we talked about is putting the police chief under the town manager so I struck through police chief there is no town sergeant um, and a town attorney and other such officers as they need to be necessary again to you those of your currently five appointed officers uh, carried down to three uh, deputies and assistants so again we're getting back to which employees council appoint versus uh, the town manager um, and strikes through the town council may appoint deputies and assistants to the appointed officers as they deem necessary. That really falls under the town manager position. Uh, officers and deputies and assistants struck through deputies and assistants again. And that's pretty much it. If the courts, there are no municipal courts anymore, so that's, I don't see those coming back ever. All right. Uh, that's, that's about it. Okay, uh, so the way we'll handle this is, thank you, Brian. Uh, the way we'll handle this is go section by section and um, open, uh, open up each one for discussion. So the council will turn their packets to section 1.3, form of government. Uh, Councilman Davis. I was under the impression that this was simply to set it for a public hearing next month. <laughs> Why, why, why did I think that? You, you do have to uh, 
Yes, you do have to set a public hearing. Um, so that's kind of up to you whether you want to discuss this more now or I guess it generally would be a good idea to talk through whether you're in agreement because you do have to, correct me if I'm wrong, test it, list a, in your public hearing advertisement you have to, you don't have to be specific specific but you kind of have to generally describe mm -hmm. the changes mm -hmm. you're, you're proposing to make. I can tell you now, as I told you before, there are things in here that, that ultimately what I, I know I'm going to want some discussion about. And if we're going to have a public hearing, shouldn't they be involved and be able to hear, know that we're discussing these and, and be here to respond and, and interject what they have to say? I mean, what we're doing here affects everybody in town. It's not just something that affects council. So, you know, it's just my thoughts. <coughs> Absolutely, and a public hearing will be had. Uh, this is to discuss what actually moves forward to the public hearing. But shouldn't our citizens have the ability to hear this discussion and give input as to what they think is important? Absolutely. <laughs> so then why wouldn't we hold the discussions you're about to have once people are aware that we're going to be holding the, those specific discussions in, in a hearing where they get the chance to, because they haven't seen these. Nothing done today prohibits additional discussion during or after the public hearing. This simply lays out what moves forward for a public hearing. Not everything in here needs to move forward for a public hearing. Okay. And that's what we're trying to uh, determine tonight. Okay. So we'll have these debates tonight then. And if you want to have additional debates, during or after the public hearing? Absolutely. There's a, the public hearing is simply the first step before um, sending to the General Assembly. Even after the public hearing, we can still discuss whether or not these requests are made to the General Assembly. So, so generally speaking, you can discuss it tonight, make changes, but uh, it's just kind of, we can, if you, if you want to hold off on discussion tonight till the next meeting, we can word the public hearing advertisement to generally include reference to all of this or as little as you decide. Both ways are correct. I don't mind having the discussion tonight, but I think it's going to bear further discussion when the, the citizens can be involved in that. I mean, I, I definitely, I think it's no secret after discussions with other folks, I have some problems with some of the things that are in here. But that's why there are seven of us here. Um, so, I mean, I, Chief's not here. And I, and I understand why he's not here, but I think he definitely has some input on some of the stuff that's in here. And we can have the discussion as long as, as long as when we leave here tonight, what we're going to bring to the public hearing is not in concrete before the citizens get an opportunity to digest that and give their opinions on it. Absolutely. And I'm in favor of erring on the side of too much discussion. So having discussion tonight and having discussion at the next meeting is uh, it's fine by me. Um, so, does the rest of the council want to move forward with uh, with some of this uh, with an initial discussion tonight? It's fine with me. Perfect. So, section one point three, form of government. Uh, any thoughts, comments, questions, concerns from the council on this? <coughs> okay, I do uh, myself have some thoughts, comments, questions, and concerns. <laughs> Could you leave with those next time? <laughs> Um, when, when we put in here that we are a council manager form of government, that's begging the question, what is a definition of council manager form of government? Uh, because as we discussed at the, uh, at the work session, it's a very broad concept. So I just want to make sure, uh, Brian, that we're not um, pigeonholing ourselves into one conceptualization of a council manager form of government, and that council manager form of government simply means that council appoints a manager. I'm just telling you that's what, uh, back in the 20s, that's, that's the form of government that the town folks, which Trump was, was uh, that y'all operates for 100 years, so I just stuck it in there to clarify the uh, if you don't want to, that's y'all short, but you still operate under a council manager form of government. 
Okay. No. And, uh, so like. I think, we're, uh, I think we're on the same page. But, but the charter kind of specifies when you get the duties and powers, that in effect spells out who does what, and then you get into the code. Right. Okay. Um, when we uh, went one, two, third line down, uh, about three quarters of the way through, uh, all powers of the uh, town shall be invested in elective council. Um, I would recommend we add, uh, for an elected council, uh, that we add an, an independently elected mayor and an elected, uh, an elected council. Uh, uh, that was just standard language I got okay. in front of Sure. Well, uh, charters, generally, generally the, the council's got more powers than the mayor. Sure. I mean, Absolutely. Just, just saying how it is. I did read in, in some other places during the research on this that there are some really strange forms of mayor council and town council. The manager relationship is there, but the mayor is not, in fact, anything other than a, a council member with a right to vote, whereas here they don't. So it may not be a bad idea to articulate that portion of it. It's, yeah, going, going back to this, there are some other forms of government where the right, the for example, it's lifted or the mayor was elected by the town council, which in my opinion is probably the better way to do it, but I understand both arguments. <laughs> um, and, and, and the mayor voted because he was a member of the town council also. Okay. Um, and then the only other thing that I have for this session where it lists the, uh, the duties of the town manager. Uh, that's already included in section four. I just want to make sure that we're not, um, it, that because there's a slight change in the phrasing, uh, that could lead to some ambiguities and potential legal issues. Yeah, I don't know where you are either. Sure. So, I'm sorry. Uh, under section 1.3, uh, the third line from the bottom, appoint a town manager who shall serve at the will of council and shall execute the laws and administer the uh, government of the town. Uh, all powers of the town. Okay, um, actually, never mind, I think that's, uh, that's fine. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, section 3.1, um, elections. What are our thoughts, comments, concerns on Section 3.1? Hard enough finding somebody to run for two-year terms, much less four, but it's probably the right thing to do. So, so if, if I could comment, one, one, I thought about this after the last meeting, and I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, but I think y'all used to do it here. What, one thing to incentivize people, you can't do it yourself, on yourself, but future councils, if you want to incentivize people for staying on council longer, one thing you could go back to doing because we, we already paid the y'all already paid the mayor a salary. Let's go back to paying the council members a salary. Well, gets money. <laughs> and that, well, that's that's changed the whole ballgame. And, that, and that's, <laughs> that's typical. I mean, uh, for yeah, example, as reference, yeah, I mean, employees used to pay the mayor and maybe more nine thousand dollars. Council members seventy two hundred. Now employees a little bit bigger, but I'm not suggesting a lot that bigger. much. I'm just saying a lot you can pay. You can. A lot of localities, if not most, do pay salaries to the council members and you know, reimbursement for internet and those kind of things is working for So, Councilman Davis, that's y'all's choice. Um, I'm going to follow up with what Aaron just said. I think that the purpose of having an election is so that the people of this town have the opportunity to make changes in who represents them and the decisions being made here. And while I understand Mr. Grover's point, manager that from his perspective trying to get projects done and move on things in the long term planning that makes it incredibly difficult it also blocks in the people of the town from being able to make if there was a drastic change needed the ability to do that now i understand it'll be three this year four this year three this year four years but that will still take a two-term time period before town council could completely be changed I don't personally like the idea that the folks out here are stuck with four of us and three of us at a time. Uh, I don't see where there's 
there's been any problem that can be articulated out of what we've been currently doing, um, other than you know from the planning perspective there. But I don't necessarily. I'm not going to say that. I'm like, it probably would be okay. I just don't understand why we. Unless you can articulate something that is a specific example of where this has caused a problem, why the people shouldn't have been able to voice their voice every two years the way we've been doing. Councilman Yates. As a council person, um, I know I came in with certain goals, which I've been pretty vocal and public about, um, wanting to get done in the town of Crew. And I've just sat here recently and we're through already into our third month of 24 months and it, the time goes very quickly. I personally do not think I will be able to achieve the goals that I have set for myself to help the, help clean up the community and the things that I'll clean up in two years. I think it's going to be very, it's, that, that's going to be almost impossible. And so I really think that the four years is or three or four or whatever is better because it gives us the time to get things done. Then, addressing what Aaron said, you know, he said, well, it's hard to get anybody to serve. I would maybe beg to differ with that. We have Wendy who has now both sitting in on a second, what, second term? Oh, yes. Aaron, yeah. you're, you were here before. You're, you're going, you're up now for four. And you've been here forever. Um, Jess and I are new, you know, I, right? I mean, Jan's been serving for a long time. So I think that I think that people are more willing to serve if those that throw our head, hand in our uh, name in the hat <laughs> than you might realize. Uh, Vice Mayor. Okay. Um, now on that note, I, I agree with what Aaron says. It's very hard to get. I mean, I, I know a couple people threw their hat in the ring because we didn't have enough sign up to run to begin with uh, for the two-year term. Um, but on the other hand, I've just served my first two years. I'm on my third year, and I'm still learning. I, I, two years is barely enough to get your feet wet. Um, I can tell you, I, I do agree with probably, I mean, although whether people would really want to put their neck out there for four years, um, but I agree with the four-year term as far as learning enough to make solid, sound decisions about the town. Um, I believe we need four years, but I do see a problem with getting people to sign on for four years. Okay. Thank you. Uh, before we move on to uh, Councilman Davis, uh, Stinson or Foss? Thank you. Um, I'm hearing all sides of this, and I, you know, there's good points both ways. I think as a governing body, we can't worry so much about the what ifs if someone will run or not. It's always been a problem. Well, sometimes it's a problem, sometimes it's not. I don't know that that's something that we can really make decisions to cure. So um, it is having served several terms, and I learned something every time. Two years is a short amount of time to get your feet on the ground and to figure out how things work. And there is a lot to be said for continuity. I, I guess I'm an optimist. I don't see that seven people would be elected and that citizens would be just served by all of them and have to get, I just, it's certainly possible, but I don't see that as a realistic concern. Thank you. And uh, anything to add, Councilman? No, I, I, think it, I think it would provide more stability and less turnover, which will be good, and uh, be able to, to get some of these projects done instead of you know two years to get part way in. And then there is, you know, maybe some turnover, and then the projects are dropped and aren't picked back up. So I'm for this. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Two words. Run again. This 
Stinson has been on this council for several terms. And it's just, it's, if you're doing your job, sitting at this table, for those people, they'll remember that. I'm here because nobody else wanted the chair. I am that person, and I'm the first one to admit it. I didn't have to run for it. I didn't have to debate for it. I didn't have to get out and do the work for it. I'm here because nobody else wanted the chair. And, and like Ms. Denson said, that's not always the case. But that's the purpose of doing this. If you're doing your job, Aaron's been here multiple terms, Wendy's been here multiple terms, Phil, you've been here multiple terms in one capacity or another. Ann's been here multiple terms. We're the kind of the three newbies to the block. I don't think that it's that if you're doing your job, you have the option to run again. And if you're doing it right, you'll get elected again. And the continuity that we keep speaking about will still be there. If we're not doing our job, then we shouldn't be. And they ought to have the right to tell us that we shouldn't be. My two cents. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Yates. The opposite side of that is to have a four-year term. And if that person commits to a four-year term and it just doesn't work out in their lives, they can step down. There's nothing that's going to tie anybody's legs to the floor. So, you know, it's just the opposite side. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, any other comments on this or, uh, so, or on council? I will point out that there is another component to this that, uh, that council has not discussed, and that is the term of the mayor. Uh, given that um, we do have a, with, with, within the council manager form of government, uh, if you read the, uh, the literature I handed out uh, last week, more of an empowered mayor. Do we want to limit the term of mayor to the current two years, or uh, as is suggested, extend it to four years? What, is, what are the thoughts of council on that? I'm all for four years. I'm all for four years. Same for the mayor as it is for the rest of council. So, uh, anything else to discuss on section 3.1? Yeah. Um, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. 3.1b, I just had a suggestion for the second sentence, and that would be an election, and I think there it would we would need to tweak it so it didn't say for the mayor being every two years thereafter, if you all are going to agree that the mayor be elected every four years. Okay. So, I would just suggest we just need to make that little change. Perfect, thank you. Any other comments on section 3.1? If not, uh, just by show of hands, what is the general consensus? Uh, should this be included in the public hearing? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on, section 3.2, uh, vacancies on council. Um, I believe the intent of this is to comply with the with Code of Virginia. Uh, I would only uh, suggest that we may consider, uh, rather than striking it entirely, um, put in there uh, for the unexpired portion of the term uh, such vacancies uh, uh, shall be temporarily filled by council. So basically allowing what we did this time and allowing council to temporarily appoint someone to, a, to the position and then go about the uh, special election. But isn't that what the code, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, what Councilman Simpson. What the code, is that not what the code says? It's not, oh. I believe the code is it's... silent on that. Oh, and right. It I basically think, says. I don't, I don't think so. We just went through this at the supervisor's level. Um, when, they, when they called in Lynn Sheckle. Okay. Well, we, we can. Uh, we can oh, right. Well, uh, we'll uh, revisit. Oh, go ahead, uh, Councilman Davis. All the recommendation I would make there is that we articulate the code on section. Sure. Everybody's looking at this. They, it tells them exactly where they can go to reference. Other yeah. Nope. Go ahead, uh, Jesse. This is 24.2-228. 
um, interim appointment to local governing body or elected school board. And Section A says, when a vacancy occurs in a local governing body or elected school board, the remaining members of the body or board, respectively, within 45 days of the office becoming vacant, may appoint a qualified voter of the election district to fill the vacancy. And then it just goes on to say, if you don't, then the circuit court can name it. Okay. But basically, it does have to be an appointment within 45 days. And then, after that, the town attorney has to petition for the special election within a certain amount of days to permanently fill it. Okay, perfect. So uh, I withdraw my, uh, my suggestion. Uh, to <coughs> Councilman Davis's point, uh, I see your point. Um, in, within, the, uh, within the code, especially since we sent it to Mune Code for, uh, for updating, they include the, uh, the reference, uh, the state code reference section at the bottom of each. Uh, if we were to put the specific code section in there, uh, we would have to then petition for a charter change if it were ever, if the General Assembly were to ever move the, uh, move the code around. Um, any other questions on that? Everyone good with that? Okay. Yes. Uh, <coughs> section 3.5, uh, powers and duties of the mayor. Um, he and the council uh, shall see the duties of the various town appointed officers are faithfully performed. Any comments, questions, concerns? Um, I don't Councilman, see how it helps anything to uh, put to strike may deputize such. I mean, yeah, you can laugh like it sounds crazy, but it doesn't. It doesn't hurt anything to have it there, and like you said before, I think it's a theme where it's just kind of picking holes. If there was ever a need, it's there. So I wouldn't strike that. That's my my thoughts on that. Okay. Uh, speaking to that um, specifically, any uh, Councilman Davis? I'm going to agree with Aaron again. Um, the town of Cambridge just had a situation where all but one of their police officers were gone. Um, the mayor there has the authority to hire and fire the police chief. They answer to him. Uh, subject to the supervision of the town manager. Their charter required that they have a police chief and one police officer. So Tony Matthews, the town manager, is now a sworn officer of the town of Cambridge until they can fill those other slots so that they stay in compliance with their charter. Um, so there may, could be somewhere in the future a situation where you or council would need to do something like that. Just throwing it out there. It, it just happened in a neighboring town. Okay. Uh, Councilman If you do deputize someone, like he's talking about, what training do they receive? None. Tell me that none. Well, like on top of it. Uh, let's, uh, yeah. uh, or, is, anything else to add? In these days and times, um, where the police are right there in the forefront in all kinds of situations, I wonder about the liability. Okay. Uh, Councilman Yates, you had something to add? No. Oh. Okay. Um, anyone else have, uh, Councilman, uh, well, uh, Bowen or Kloss first? No? No? No. Uh, Reed, you had something else? Uh, not particularly. Just, I think, uh, in the event that the mayor or council did have to deputize somebody, I feel like there would be a pretty drastic situation and the liabilities probably outweigh the liabilities of an untrained person given what we see in the, in the world today. Uh, who knows when we may need uh, more people than five police officers checking the town. I don't see the point of taking that. How does it help us? Okay. And anything else from council on this, on the issue of whether or not the mayor may deputize such assistant policemen as may be necessary? I would just say that confuses the council manager form of government at that. If you have somebody theoretically come in as mayor, they can interpret that as may, as may be necessary. They can determine they think that's any time necessary where he or she deputizes the policeman and not be not going through a hiring process for through the police chief and the manager. Anyway, that's what issue is there. Okay, so by a show of hands, uh, well, any other comments on that? By show of hands, uh, 
striking may deputize such assistant policemen as may be necessary, uh, included in the uh, public hearing. Are you striking it? Oh, I'm just saying that the way it's written is the, the, the proposed change is to strike. May deputize such assistant policemen as may be necessary. I'm sorry, another point, just to make sure we all are. If you get into an emergency situation, and I'm losing the term off the top of my head right now, but you can call in other jurisdictions to help. What's the term? I'm drawing mutual, aid. Mutual, mutual aid. Mutual aid. So, regardless, you never you, you shouldn't get in a situation where you don't just have police not to. You're always going to be covered through other localities. Maybe. Yeah. And yet, Kimberly wasn't. I don't know. In today's day and age, yeah, it doesn't help us. It doesn't help. Okay. Us. Well, we'll um, it's not a big enough. Shall, anyway, that's our. Shall the uh, change move forward? Shall the proposed change move forward to the public hearing? By show of hands. Okay. Uh, that one will move forward. Um, I just want to, uh, for he and the council, that doesn't necessarily mean that the mayor must, I don't know how to say this without, can the mayor act independently of council or if we put he in the council? And or must the mayor and... consult with council every time? Okay. Um, he wants to see yep. the duties of the various town appointed officer faithfully. I would say if it's and you have to act with town council, if it's or you don't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the current uh, wording is he and the council. Do we like he and the council or he or the council? Like and the council. And. Mm -hmm. A and D. Really? <laughs> okay, and the rest of you, Davis, Reed, and Yates. And or or? I don't particularly have a position on this. I don't know that it's worth putting to a public hearing. But. I, I think if I do something we ask, we can, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, Okay, um, let's... And you were already going to move the May deputize such forward to the public hearing, and that's included in the same paragraph, so do I just take that paragraph forward and not address it? Well, it's, a, it's, it's two separate issues. So this really... But it's in the same block of power and duty as the mayor. Uh, so if this um, proposed change passes he and the council versus he or the council, uh, it would dilute the powers of the, uh, of the mayor. So just for clarification, the, the charter and the code conflicts with itself in several places. The wording in that almost makes it where the appointed officers report directly to the mayor. And that's not the way this works. The appointed officers report to the mayor and council. And y'all as the council are the only ones that vote in the case of the tie with the mayor can break the tie, but the mayor, <laughs> it's somewhat of a, the word, the wording on that currently is pretty conflictual where you're setting up a system where it sounds like the mayor supervises the town appointed officers, but in reality, y'all have more power than the mayor does when it comes to voting and otherwise. So the, anyway, that was just clarification to make sure everybody's on the same page that the appointed officers report to the mayor and council, which is already the practice. Okay, questions? Yes, Bill, where do you, under, can you give me where you think this might be? What power does the mayor have currently under the current code which you feel is not going to be there under this? What situation would, would arise that we, I mean, I, and I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it being like it is because I think this is significant, um, but what situation would arise where you would be doing something that there, you wouldn't be notifying the rest of us and having us on board anyway? Is there anything you can think of that would come to that? Uh, not off the top of my head, but the original wording, he shall see the duties of various town officers are faithfully performed. Uh, I'm fine with putting in appointed. 
Um, that's just a very broad um, discretion. At the end. But this limits that discretion to um, the end of, uh, it, essentially that the mayor cannot act without uh, consulting with council. What would that act be? I'm not sure. I'd have that's, to think about some, some examples. Because I think that also falls under uh, something that I'll debate a little bit when we get to it. But um, hold that thought for later in the discussion. Okay. Um, maybe it'll come back around. Perfect. So we will come back to that part. Uh, moving on. Uh, section 3.8. Uh, appointment officers and employees, strike them and employees, that, uh, that just goes to uh, sound personnel practices. Any, uh, any objections to that? Okay. Moving on, um, section 4.1, uh, appointment, the town council changing may to shall appoint a chief administrative officer. Uh, the, I, I see a couple concerns with requiring. Uh, that we appoint a chief administrative officer. Uh, take for example, um, last October when we were uh, when we did not have a um, town manager, and we wanted to save a little bit of money, and we had uh, the mayor and vice mayor at the time perform the duties of the town manager until we hired Ryan, who didn't start until January February of this year. Uh, that's one example where we may not want to have the general assembly tell us, well, now, now you're going to have to appoint a uh, town manager. Uh, second example is the town of Burkeville, where they've um, uh, uh, decided that their um, chief executive officer should also uh, serve the role as chief administrative officer. Um, I'm not saying that that's the best way to, uh, to go about things, but having that uh, ability to do so if, uh, if they need to. Uh, thoughts, comments, questions, concerns on section 4.1? Uh, Stinson. Uh, and I agree, that is what we did when the former town manager uh, retired. But I think we have to be careful that we, if you use the word may, it doesn't really say that they ever have to appoint, choose a town manager, hire a town manager. And I think that goes against the form of government that are, that we're talking about. Um, if there were some way to, I mean, if it makes folks feel better to say, shall within a reasonable period of time, or shall after advertising a position, yeah, you, that's not the correct wording, but you get what I mean. Well, yeah, that, that's kind of already addressed in section two. You can appoint an acting town manager, mm -hmm. and I think to Anne's point, that that's just clarifying that I don't know how you can operate under a council manager form of government and don't have it say shall appoint. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it. Councilman Reed. Yes. So, I agree with the the mayor. I feel like council should, I think, I feel like it should say may, because if council deems necessary to have the council manager form of government, then they appoint a town manager and that's what they use. If for whatever reason some council in the future deems it's not necessary to have a town manager or to use the council manager form of government, then we're not pigeonholing them by putting shall. Again, it's kind of like before. Why change it from, from may to shall, just tell them, you know, I don't see where we benefit from it. If it's shall, then that means if it's in the best interest of the town and if that's what county, town council feels like is best, then they can do it. But, or if it's may. If it's shall, then they don't have a choice. Uh, so, again, I'm with less restrictive language versus more restrictive language. I don't see how we benefit from it. I agree with, uh, with Councilman Reed. Um, localities are given very little uh, discretion on how to do anything. Um, our, what, because we're Dillon Rule State, uh, if it's in our charter, we can uh, we we have the discretion. Uh, but when we uh, change change it from more open-ended to more restrictive language, uh, we are uh, invariably restricting ourselves. Um, 
Councilman Davis, I don't think you've spoken on this one yet. I have not. Okay. Uh, two points. Number one, I agree with Aaron. Again, I like me instead of shout. Um, but my question that I have, and perhaps this is best addressed to the town attorney, when we write these and we put stuff like town manager form of government in this charter, does that mean that somehow there is a legal binding something that says that under certain circumstances, under different days, different times, that, that that's, that's it. You've got to have a town manager because you said this is a manager council form of government. That to me would seem intrusive into the, the us being able to elect and, and do what we want to do. Obviously with the charge chain, but is that, does that require us to have some general guidelines of what a town manager council form of government is supposed to look like? Mm -hmm. I think it would set up the general kind of form, but I think that the real meat of it in there is, you know, 4.1 about, you know, and really all of section four that talks about what a town manager does. So while you have that, that just kind of supports what's going on in 4.1 and then also the powers of the council and the mayor that are set forth in the other things. So I don't think read alone per se, it sets up necessarily any legal requirements, but read as a whole and read with the different powers it could. So uh, very broadly, uh, Councilman Davis, a council manager form of government simply is a town council appoints an administrator to oversee the day-to-day -day administration. Um, how they appoint that individual is, or, or who they appoint to that position is at complete discretion. It's uh, um, contrasted with a, uh, a quote-unquote strong mayor form of government where the mayor, so take the city of Richmond for example, where the mayor uh, himself appoints uh, the chief administrative officer. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Um, but this part, uh, section four point one, where it says where it changes from may to shall. Um, again, just uh, just restricts that a little bit further, uh, because it not only um, says that as a as a council manager form of government, we have an administrator appointed. It's that we must appoint an administrator um, it, even for, say, a short period of time, um, uh, like the three or four months that we were with that town manager last year. Right. Again, anyone else? Okay, by show of hands, uh, shall this um, change move forward to public hearing? Right, so can I clarify what the voting means? Oh, uh, j just that it's uh, moving forward to the, uh, to the public hearing. To change it to yes. shall. I'm going to vote. Right. So if we voted no tonight as a group, it doesn't move forward that to portion public hearing. stays the same and it doesn't move to public hearing. Correct. Correct. Um, I want to move it to public hearing. I didn't raise my hand. Okay. Okay, so this one will move to public hearing. Um, Section 4.4, duties of town manager. Uh, I've got nothing on that one. Uh, that actually should be 4.3, but. 4.3 is behind it, right? Uh, right, so it's, it, in red it says 4.4, it should be 4.3. This section, duties of town manager, anything? Well, I just, wonder, names? I just wonder why no. that would be included in the charter. I mean, it's like, I feel like we're telling future councils what they should uh, require of their town manager when it may not even be more necessary. Uh, so, just my thought. Okay, thank you, Councilman Reed. Councilman Davis. Can't believe this. We three for three, dude. Um, I, I've made my thoughts known privately and publicly. Um, I, I don't understand why we would need to delineate and articulate the powers that we give to a town manager to do his job. He works for us. As that goes, I, 
also don't believe. How far down do you want me to go with this? Are we down into the red? Yeah, uh, right. Uh, anything under uh, 4.3. I have a specific problem with the town police chief being hired and dismissed at the at the whim of the town manager. Um, as this would go through, it says all employees of the town, including department head positions which means without advice of council, without consent of council, without input of council, the town manager can make the decision on who gets hired and who gets fired, and argue, arguably the most visible and important position in town crew. Because I'll debate town manager versus police chief. Um, this is a position that has a direct impact on our community, and as such, it bears more discussion than one person making that decision. And I know that I've had this debate with some other folks here, and, and for the benefit of the folks out there, we are acting under an assumption that perhaps Mr. Thrower will be here longer than the initial contract we signed with him. If that's the case, then I can certainly understand where you'd want to empower him that. But the reality of it is, there is at least a chance that four years and four months from now, we're going to be looking for another town manager. Four years, four months from now, we may none of us be on this town council. What we are doing here is setting a precedent and rules and guidelines for not just what we do today, but for what this body is going to do for perpetuity until so moved to go through this whole process again. I just don't, I, I'm kind of like Aaron, I don't understand if we are clear and concise with our direction to the town manager as our appointee why we would need him to be in charge of another appointee. We, we haven't discussed town clerk at all in the name of putting them under directly supervisors. Under, and I think maybe throw you on the bus, but there's only one political appointee that's been discussed in this matter. And, and it's the most important person we have in the town. And we're gonna allow, take Brian out of the picture, because I trust Brian's opinion, but take Brian out of the picture, we're giving that power to one person. And there's nothing in this document that says that town council, short of instructing on threat of termination, can force the town manager to make that decision in the same direction that we as council would like to go. And I, I just, I think that's, that's too much unnecessary authority pushed to them because we're already letting putting the power in to run the town in every other aspect. We're getting rid of a political appointed position and making it an employable, employee hired position by the town manager. That on its face, I think, is problematic. So, my input, sure. but it goes into a lot of this, I mean. Thank you. Um, so, uh, we'll go ahead and pass this one by uh, momentarily. Um, because, as Councilman uh, Davis points out, uh, sub, uh, subsection 5, uh, and, or uh, I'm sorry, subsection 3, and then oh, five also. And five, uh, does discuss department heads, and we do have a broader conversation that we need to have first, and that's whether or not the police chief falls under uh, uh, a council appointee. So let's discuss that and come back to this one uh, momentarily. Uh, it's not in here. I'm sorry? No, there, there's no bullet point. 5.1? Oh, we're moving on to 5.1. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and, uh, and discuss 5.1. We'll, uh, we'll discuss all of Section 4 um, uh, at the end. Um, again, this uh, Section 5.1, the town council shall appoint, and we'll take these one by one. Again, here we say, shall appoint a town manager, um, if we include town manager. Uh, previously, it wasn't included, um, even though for you know 70 or so years after uh, we established ourselves as a council manager form of government, we did not have, uh, necessarily have that. Um, so should town manager be included in there, understanding that it's already somewhere else, this simply reiterates the shall. The shall's in black, is that new? No, no, no. Uh, town manager. Anything in red is new. Town manager. Town manager is new. Um, because of the word shall. 
Um, but if it goes forward in the previous yeah. statute, then it should remain in there. Correct. So it would be contingent on 4.1, on the outcome of 4.1, of whether town manager would remain in there. Correct. Yes. So, so that's a contingency. Yeah. So is everyone good with including town manager under 4. Point, no, I'm sorry, 5.1? Uh, yes. By show of hands, shall it move forward? Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, just, just the word. It's ten, the same just the, vote. It's the same same it is. Yeah. Right. It's not in red, but we're talking about that. It's just instead of no, 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 no. town manager, it's is what we're discussing. Yeah. <laughs> Shall. Yeah. Yeah. Town managers. I don't think it's. It, I'm sorry. I don't think it's important either way. It, it, it is an appointed position. If you don't list the rest of what difference does it make? It's the shall and the may. That's the right. Oh yeah. Well, it's that same discussion that we had previously. Then let's pretend this is a red pin. And let's circle the word shall there, since this is prepared by the manager for our review. Well, it, shall was already it was there a, before it, town manager was not. But we're making okay. amendments, are we? Well, this will resolve itself based on the previous one. That's right. Um, let's skip to town sergeant. We're good with town sergeant being taken out there. Anyone really, really want the town sergeant in there? I'm not even sure what the role of that, the, the, the purpose of that role was back in the 20s. Probably the municipal court that used to be here. Probably. Good point. Okay, now let's move on to chief of police. Do I need to say it again? Uh, uh, Councilman Davis already, uh, does anyone else have thoughts? I have thoughts. Mayor, of course. Councilman um, Reed. I disagree with the premise that the chief of police can't be appointed by council and still answer to the, the uh, town manager as his direct chain of command. Um, and I think that's, I don't think chief of police should be, I think the town council should appoint the chief of police, so I think it should stay there. And I think that the chief of police can be appointed by council and still be directly responsible to uh, the town manager. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Yates. My concern with that is, is in a small town, it's easy to grade lines and for people to overstep their boundaries. And I, as a, if I was a police chief, I wouldn't want eight bosses. I'd want one. And especially in the chief of police position because they have to make tough decisions. And when you've got you know, him saying one thing and me saying another, and it, it, there is absolutely no continuity for the police chief and creates a very frustrating situation. I feel, and I feel very strong about that. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Foss. Um, I, I don't think the chief of police should be a politicized position. Um, and that's what we, we see now. Um, so I think if it is um, hired, fired, and supervised by the town manager, which the previous council voted to try and do, and, and they just didn't, you know, continue to do it. Um, I, I think we should do that. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, vice Mayor or former Vice Mayor? I agree with um, Ms. Yates that the person can't operate with eight bosses. Okay. Uh, Councilman Bowman, Vice Mayor Bowman? Um, I agree. Um, I believe that we should get input in the decision, but we shouldn't be the one to fire that person. It, it's, it's kind of a situation to where if you have somebody managing an employee and that employee does something that is outright unconceivable, the person managing that employee should have the right to dismiss that employee without having to 
go through steps and us doing it. Now, I agree that we need to be informed and we need to be consulted, but they should have the power to do that. Thank you. Uh, Jameson, read the needs. <laughs> um, I guess I'm a little confused. I'm not sure how a police chief would be answering to eight different bosses, considering that we've already articulated that they would be supervised by the town manager up to and, 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 and being held to all of the personnel policies, policies and HR policies and everything else that would be brought to that. It's clear that the town of Blackstone is doing this right now. And I have personally spoken with Kuzmiak, the chief. I've spoken with Van Orvick, the town manager. I've spoken with Billy Colburn, the mayor. And they, are, they, they said it works fabulously. More importantly, it's worked here in some form or fashion like this forever. Again, I think Brian is a professional. I think Brian understands what it is to bring somebody in, what it means to let them go. Brian will not be our last town manager, most likely. We will certainly not be the last town council here. I have a problem with passing the legislation that will restrict this, this body to the decisions that it wishes to make go forward. Because once you give this, you're going to have to do a whole act of Congress General Assembly to undo this at a future time. It's already working in a neighboring town that has just as much blow up and fluff and problems and issues, if not more, and certainly more visible than this one. So I, I don't understand having eight bosses. There's only one. It would be Brian. If something goes on that Brian feels rises to the level that of, the, of a need for termination, it gets brought to town council just like it's always been, whether it was the mayor or whoever doing it. If it comes time for hiring, how could anyone sitting on this board want to have a police chief, the most visible person in our town government, to be chosen by one person? And while we can all hypothesize that the nothing bad would ever happen and with Brian being there it's all going to be great and everything's going to go smoothly what if it doesn't your only option then is to fire him and it still brings you to the process of not only hiring a new police chief because he's fired him but then you've got to turn around and hire a new town manager which is probably more difficult to find than the police chief I just don't understand why as a body we would want to give up that authority I mean, I, I know Phil has expressed some concern about the mayor's office giving up some authority. And this is one of the biggest decisions that we as a town council make when it comes up. The manager and the police chief. Why would we want to give that up? I, I, I don't understand what we gain by doing that. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Councilman Reed. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to hear, and maybe offline or outside of the council meeting, uh, why everyone feels that the police chief would have eight bosses. Because he would, he would have one boss, and that would be the town manager. Just, just practice. That sounds good in theory. I've seen it done. I mean, that's how the military works. You're in charge of someone that you, if, if the town manager in charge of the department head feels that the department head needs to be terminated, he would bring that to council. Most likely, we would take his recommendation, but there's absolutely no reason why the chief of police cannot be responsible to the town manager, even though the town manager isn't the one that hired him. And we're not his bosses. We would not be direct supervision at all. It's a unity, unified chain of command is what we're trying to achieve here. So the police chief answers to the town manager, that's it. That doesn't mean the town council can't appoint him. That's my two cents. Thank you. Uh, Yates, boss, and then Prower. Back to, my, back to my thought. First off, I don't think that the council loses a power by giving town manager the authority to do his job. We still, he still answers to us. So I think that if there was a real problem or if all of us thought there was a real problem with the police chief, who is very visible in the town, then we would be going to the town manager and expressing our concerns. 
but at least we wouldn't be dragging the police chief through it. I just think it is, I think the police chief is such an important position, and I watch day after day these police officers, these police chiefs right, right now that are stepping down and, and doing all these things. We need, we need to make their job as, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't want to say easy, but as non-volatile as it can be, and they need continuity. In, in After you just fired the police chief from every day, that's all marked out. You know what, Aaron? You want to run no, the town? <coughs> no, no, uh, no, no, cross the state, please. Um, anything else to add? I don't think we need to run the town like the military runs the military. Uh, Councilman Boss. Um, well, my concern with that, and you kind of segue into it, and I say, is council acting independently without input from the manager? So, if he's an employee of the manager and hired and fired by council, I mean, council would be able to act independently of the town manager without recommendation, and then we run into a situation, again, where we may have the KC firings, or high turnover rate. Uh, Brian, uh, did you have any? Yeah, I, 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 good, good points on both sides, and I certainly appreciate and understand the debate. Um, I know this is a hard, choice I, I'm just suggesting to you in my opinion many if not most other cities and towns the police chief is under the city or town manager that's the best way to structure that position it sounds good in theory that the town manager can supervise the police chief but still but for council retain the hiring and firing authority I just practically when push comes to shove, I don't think that's a very good system. Maybe they've done it for what, done it well in Blackstone and whatnot, but I don't know how the manager that has no real authority over the police chief supervises to any successful degree a chief that ultimately is hired and fired by the council because you're getting into communication issues, you know, I've got eight of y'all, whoever the manager is, telling me what they think about the chief. Then I'm going back where the manager is talking to the police chief. Y'all got y'all's own opinions on this. And then when you get to start doing performance reviews, who's going to do the performance review? Y'all hire and fire. <laughs> I'm just telling you practically, this is not a this is not an ideal system the way I think some of y'all are conceptualizing it. Uh, Stinson. Being as it's been pointed out how long I've been on the <laughs> <laughs> Just as long as me. Yes. But I'm older than you, so yeah. I remember some <laughs> situations back before that. And I'm not going to bring up any personalities, but I will say in recent months, certain persons that have been touted as wonderful police chiefs in the past were fired under the system that we currently have. So, with all due respect, I guess it hasn't. It probably worked fine for the people that were on council, well, I don't know, the mayors at that time, but I don't know that we can say that it's worked fine and crew all along. There's been a lot of turnover, and some good people were doing a good job Thank you, back Mr. in the day. For uh, Vice Mayor, do you have anything to add? Um, uh, I'm tired of seeing Sean. I know his arm's getting <laughs> heavy, so go ahead. <laughs> uh, Councilman Davis. For a, for a person with the educational background and the experience Mr. Thurow has, with all due respect, these systems do work. They have worked. Chief Kuzmiak is the extent that the only person he has to answer to is the town manager, which you're right because he doesn't have three bosses anymore. However, to answer the question of who does this and who does that, every aspect of managing the department would fall under the town manager up to the decision to fire him. That means evaluations. That means corrections. They have that relationship in Blackstone 
and there's no problem with it. But Philip Van Omer cannot, on his own, with no input from the members of Blackstone Council, walk in there and say, you don't work here anymore. And we can talk about the coulda, shoulda, wouldas. The fact of the matter is, this language empowers the town manager, whoever he or she may be in the town of group, to fire who they want and hire who they want. You people, you don't see that that's, there's a problem with that? I mean, you don't see in a town the size of this one, where everybody sees everybody and talks to everybody, it's still going to be your butts that are going to get chewed out when somebody disagrees with the decision, whether Brian made that decision or not. I can understand it's a big city of employee, how many people? Brian? 6,000. 6,000, so three times the size of us. Town of Farmville fluctuated anywhere between, what, 12 and 25,000? Sure, it's a different system, but we live in crew. And in crew, these things can and should still be decisions made by the people who are elected by the people of the town of crew to do this job. Because we're who they're going to expect to fix it when it's broke. I mean, you're, you're giving us no opportunity to do anything other than say, Brian, you should do this. And when Brian says no, where do we go from there? Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Reed? I was just going to make one final point, and that's that it's, it's really a silly issue, I think, to debate because council can fire the town manager at any time they want to. So if council <laughs> wanted to fire the police chief but say the town manager wouldn't do it, I'm pretty sure they would probably fire the town manager, and then the new town manager would fire the police chief. So you're not saving anything. Uh, it's just, I just don't think that, uh, I think that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Yates? I could use the same argument that Sean just said for putting the police chief directly under the town manager's authority. I think in these volatile times, it is even more important to look at the continuity of employment. And I'll tell you what, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in that position. I've worked for police departments in, in the past, and I've seen what can happen, and I think the, I think continuity in these volatile times is of the utmost concern for our police chief to feel safe and supported and like you shared because it ain't no easy job anymore. Thank you. Um, and I'll remind council, but, but just try to keep, uh, stay concise. We are getting late. Uh, uh, what if it's a bit more restrictive language, like the town uh, manager uh, has to consult council, but that council cannot work independently of the town manager to hire and fire the police chief. So you're saying something like um, the town manager, uh, like with, with the advice and consent of council? Yes, like the council, a council member can't bring to the agenda, I want to fire the police chief for, you know, a personnel, they can do a personnel discussion, but without the, the hiring department has to come from the town manager and he has to consult council before being able to do it. Uh, Councilman Stinson. I'm reading these rules over here and I'm not sure where I fall, but I feel like everybody has said their piece several times. Okay. Well, the Robert's rules has a two speed limit, but that was taken out, which I think should be put back in. And mm -hmm. I think we've all spoken. Okay, well, um, so we need to figure out what so we Shall uh, this change the police chief move to public hearing uh, by show of hands? Three, two moves to public hearing and show of hands against moving into public hearing. Two against moving into public hearing. Um, it moves to public hearing. Um, but again, we can rehash this discussion at the um, after the public hearing. Uh, does anyone have a problem with striking and such other officers as they deem necessary? Again, that just speaks to sound that's, practices. That's there's no need to take it out, just like in back in three tech one or, or whatever the first. It's the same, same, same sentence. Okay. Um, 
General consensus, though, is that it moves to public hearing. Okay. Section 5.2, again, that speaks to deputies and assistants. Um, Can I ask one question about that, though? Go ahead. What if at some point we wanted to appoint a town treasurer and separate out so that she's, not that it would be anytime soon, but how does that work into this? If are, are you saying that, appointed position we, that council, we, we as council appoint? If you want to appoint an additional position that would need to go in the charter as an appointed position. I believe the Unless it says... And, uh, okay, that's, okay, that's... Okay, that's... That's what I'm asking. Right, but, nope, that's a... If we wanted the town treasurer to handle... I the think the, the town code already says that the town manager serves as the commissioner of revenue and treasurer. Okay. But if we wanted to, at some point in the future, separate that out and have a, not that we'll ever need to, but if we did, how does this affect that? I'm asking, like, a legit question. I think would if you, you wanted specifically, if you wanted a town treasurer, you would need to add that to your charter. Mm -hmm. So. Although I would argue that probably a finance director would most likely be a better option, but that's not the thing. So if we left the and such other officers as they deem necessary in there, then if there was the occasion to need to develop a new position as an appointed position, I decision. But but I think the way that's worded now that if let's say hypothetically we would get into and a an assistant town manager, the way I interpret that is y'all as council would do that, not the town manager, or as assistant police chief, or as assistant public works director. Like resolution fix that. I'm sorry, Aaron had his hands up. Oh, uh, Councilman Reed, I, I've got a, a. I think I feel like it's a pretty specific question. Yes. How does the town benefit by by taking that out? If we say we're not allowed to appoint deputies and assistants as we deem necessary, how do we benefit from that? It seems like we have that ability now. We're going to take it away. How do we benefit from this? I guess that's the main point of the conversation. <coughs> Y'all are basically, the whole point of this conversation is trying to affirm that we, we do operate under a council manager form of government and who you specific appointees are. Uh, if you get into deputies and assistants, that's creating conflict on who appoints who to what positions. I think we're trying to make it clear about y'all's appointed positions. So if you're getting into deputies and assistants, I could say, again, assistant town manager, if we ever had money to do that, some or all of y'all could say, well, we picked that as council. And it would say basically in the charter, y'all can. Deputy police chief, instead of the police chief and the town manager, Y'all could say, not y'all, but future councils, that the council does that. So we're just trying to get into roles and structure who, who does what. Okay, uh, Davis. I, I can't help but laugh. I, I've said this since appointment or, or election to council. It feels very much like the council and the mayor are both being marginalized to the advantage of the town manager. I understand completely giving the town manager the authority and empowering him to do his job. I, this feels very much like everything that was previously council's role and purpose is being taken out and uh, we're going to end up a 30 minute body blessing when somebody else does. And, and the rest of the stuff I, I have no input on. Um, so this is my last statement in terms of the way this goes. I, I have a problem personally with the authority vested in these chairs as elected officials in the town of Crew by the people of Crew being ceded to one individual to do as he wishes as he may with the only recourse being to discipline up to firing him. I don't understand why we need to turn our town manager into the god of the town manager. Uh, Councilman Foss. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this is 
already how it works. This is well, just this, 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 this is this is just putting it, it this is just clarification. This is clarification. This is already what you do. Yes, this, this is, is already, already what the town manager does. It's not like changing yeah. your well everything your in role. Red is not written in there. Right? Well, yeah. what, what I'm trying to provide is some clarity on role because I think there's a lot of confusion about roles between the mayor, the council, and the manager. So my intent here, I'm not going to be in the seat forever, y'all yeah. not going to be in the seat forever, provide long-term best structure recommendations on how the town will best function long-term. And with all this lack of clarity on things, it creates conflict. And what we're trying to do is reduce conflict and keep things as streamlined, as efficient, and role clarity as best possible. And I'm just telling you how many, if not most, cities and towns operate. This is stand. I'm not smart enough to come up with this language. This is standard language in city and town charters. So, I mean, I understand that this is somewhat new for the council and community. I'm suggest. I'm just suggesting how other cities and towns operate and that language clarifies a lot of things that already are occurring and so it's not questions later on who have power to do what and so, so whatnot. Uh, Councilman Yates. Uh, Councilman Yates, what do you think? Well, it's Make, help make decisions that impact the town, i.e. building sidewalks and having infrastructure and um, having input on maintenance issues and that type of thing. And quite frankly, as a town as a town council member, I don't want to be a part of what he should be doing. I feel that we sh that we we have to be willing to give the, the man who is at the center of everything the power he needs to have to run our town. We're not there to we're not here to run the town, to hire and fire and to to look at people's um, you know to keep track of the employees. That's why we're hiring, that's why we're paying him. We're here to, to make the decision. When he comes to us and says, hey, you know, I've had 35 people come to me and and um, they're, they're really upset because this tree's roots are causing problems and they're fixing the road and he feels like we need to get it fixed and he should come to us and we're going to say, yeah, yeah, your name, we're, go, go ahead and get that done. That's what we're here for. We're not, and I will never, I'm not a micromanager, so I don't need to have my fingers in every single thing that the town manager does, who I believe we have to lay our trust in. And no, none of us in this room know Brian real well at this point. I think, you know, as I've watched his performance over the last eight months, I'm tickled to death with what he's doing. You know, and I think that we, we need to, and we, when we want to have our fingers in everything, we, we take, we, we should be doing things to empower him, not to diminish him. And I think that our role is very big, and it is not to be diminished when it comes to the importance of um, the matters of this town. The matters of this town are not to be micromanaging the employees that you get. So okay. Is there anything new to add to the, uh, to the discussion? Okay, uh, general consensus is to move this one to public hearing. And uh, the way we'll, uh, we'll, do the, we'll have everything at one public hearing, but then include, um, if Brian, if you could um, categorize these, and we'll have some for discussion and vote at the, uh, during uh, unfinished business at the November meeting, some at the December meeting, so that we can space these out. And because all these points everyone brings up do require uh, some significant uh, discussion, and we don't want to rush through everything. Um, section, uh, I'm sorry, chapter six, courts. I did uh, speak with BNL, and that is, in fact, um, something that will never come back again. 
uh, our powers eliminate. So no objection to removing uh, municipal courts from our charter. Okay, uh, we do need to go back to two areas where we passed by. Uh, oh, uh, and again, uh, under 3.5 powers and duties of the mayor, he and council, that speaks to a lot of the uh, conversation that we've been having, so we'll uh, move that one forward, but we'll, um, that all comes back to the, uh, to the discussion. Uh, 4.3, duties of the town manager. Um, Excluding the um, part where it says including department heads, was there anything else majorly objectionable in that? Or it, or just the fact of including in general? Are, are we going to vote on every change? Yes. Every, every, okay. Yes. I mean, generally these are done piecemeal, one here, one there. Um, section 4.4, council manager relationship. Uh, we did not discuss that yet. Um, are there thoughts on that? Or thoughts on including that in the charter versus simply just putting it in a handbook? Which 4.4? 4.4, council manager relationship. Except for the purpose of inquiry, the mayor it's and- It's actually um, labeled 4.3, but it should oh, sorry. be 4.4. Right. Uh, I'm reading my own. Yeah, it's yeah. labeled 4.3, it should, should be 4.4, top of that page. So when it says, uh, except for the purpose of inquiry, help me out. So, so again, I'm not smart enough to come up with language like that, so that's typical in other charters, and that basically, that's at the crux of the council manager form of government. The council cannot give or should not give orders directly to employees. Other than inquiry. It's a question that yeah, was asked. Ask so, yeah. so we have, we will still, as council, be able to approach that clerk and say, can, right. can you provide me with this amount of information, whatever it might be, and my answer will not be, you'll have to ask Brian first. Right. Well, um, the clerk is y'all's appointee too, sir. So uh, if I go to PJ and I say, I would like to have this information, am I going to be told, like I was about your telephone, yeah. that I'm not allowed to have that information without speaking to Brian first? Well, I would hope for any information you can, you would come to me for. But yes, for inquiry, right. yes. You can ask for information, you just can't give. The way that's, yes, you can ask for information because you just can't do it. So when they tell me no, then I would come to you and request an explanation for why I, I could or could not have that. Is that correct? Is that what the explanation is? The, expect, the way this is written is, to, is basically on the giving the order side. Yeah. You, can you, interpret, want to tell you, can, you can interpret inquiry a lot of different ways. But, um, Ask questions, ask for information, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I was just, I'm just, yeah. I, I want to yeah. make sure that the communication is going to flow both ways. Okay, uh, any objection to that moving to public hearing? No. Okay, uh, section, it says there 4.4, but 4.5, that is in the Code of Virginia, except for uh, that last phrase, nor within one year after the expiration of this term. I would suggest that we remove that. Okay. Any objection to removing that and then moving forward, moving that towards a public hearing? Okay. Well, I think that uh, that is everything, and it looks like everything moves towards a public hearing. Um, but again, we'll go ahead and have the public hearing and then tackle these piecemeal. Uh, the only one of these that has a deadline is changing the, uh, the election uh, because that would need to go in this general assembly session or else it's not, um, or else it wouldn't take effect uh, before, the, uh, before the next election. Um, Bill, yes, one thing I would add is when you all are doing your break on this, if you could also include 
there's just a few code sections in here that we can update to. So we could do that with the portal <coughs> hearing as well. So. Okay, thank you. Um, and the only other thing that I'll add to this is a um, just a personal policy. Because we are dealing with something that requires the General Assembly's action, and it changes the um, inherent nature of our um, structure of government, um, generally these things, and legally uh, the, all these things require is a simple majority, um, three of the four council members. Uh, my policy uh, for when we uh, when we propose the changes, uh, request for changes must have a two-thirds majority or I will veto the request. Um, again, the charter defines our government structure and a simple majority is insufficient to make such a change. So, as you're discussing with each other, the, um, yeah, it's, it's five out of seven is a uh, two-thirds majority if you're trying to do the math. All right, so rewind that tape in my head. So, what you when, said was. when we make, Good. when council makes these decisions as to what gets asked at the General Assembly, each one of these will be its own separate resolution. And any resolution that passes council with less than a two-thirds majority, less than five out of seven, will be vetoed only because we want to make sure that there's a uh, adequate enough majority that it's um, that because we're changing the inherent nature and structure of the government that it's not four to three votes. Does that make sense? You could have lived with that though. I could have, but... But where's the fun in that? Well, I, I, I also do. <laughs> okay, anything else? Any other questions on that? So as you're going about and speaking with, uh, with each other and maybe coming up with some, some compromise proposals, keep that in mind, uh, that any change would, will require a two-thirds majority or a veto, which you can then override the veto, but that requires a two-thirds majority. Uh, any other new business? Unfinished business. Don't we have to vote and pass uh, oh, uh, the Do we need to vote on a public hearing? Or uh, I just ask that you authorize. You don't have to, but generally I've always asked for the council okay. permission to authorize a public hearing. Is there a motion to authorize? We're going to do every single one, or if we're just doing it as a whole. So I guess we can advertise the change as a whole, but then we can vote on each one individually. Which we will need to vote on each individually because, again, we need to split these up to have that substantive discussion. Um, so, what do you need your motions to say? Uh, just to authorize a public hearing for the chart okay. changes as discussed. Motion by Davis. I'll second. Second by Bowen. All in favor? Aye. All opposed. Okay. Any other new business? Hearing none. Unfinished business. Um, and uh, request to declare a dangerous building and authorize repairs. Uh, the town manager um, recommends holding off and on any action regarding this building at this time. So hearing no objection, we will table this uh, for another month. Um, any other unfinished business? Okay. Uh, public comment. I yes, ma'am, uh, if you can approach the podium. I do, but if, if someone, since I've already spoken, there's anybody else have on the video. Just a couple of things. Um, I wanted to ask our town manager. National World Take Back Day is next Saturday, and I haven't heard that, that the town is doing anything. Are there going to be receptacles outside the police department this year? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. I believe they we do. Have, we have a number of seniors in town with a lot of drugs that need to be disposed of. So, is there is an alternative? Day? When is that day? Next Saturday, the 24th. That would be the police department that does that. The police department did it last year. So, but I hadn't heard anything, so I just wanted to be able to pass that off. Check okay, we'll, uh, we'll touch base with the uh, back and cheap pipe. Okay. Now, 
We just had an extensive discussion. I'm going to drag that horse out and kick it a couple more times because I'm not going to be here November 9th. It's my birthday. A lot of love coming to these council members. I don't plan on being here on that day. Uh, just a couple of things. First of all, let me just say, I'm as sitting here listening to this discussion, as you all decide what you are going to do going forward, we spent a lot of time talking about what I consider to be HR issues. Some of this stuff about what Brian's role is and what Brian should be doing and what his responsibility look. That stuff should have been spelled out in his employment contract or in a policy document. I don't really think that his specific duties need to be spelled out in the town charter. I just don't. Now, Ms. Bacon may have another opinion because she's here to advise you from a legal standpoint, but I don't really see where that serves any purpose. Second thing, in reading a document that was posted online, I want you to look around the table. Uh, we need to try to strive for having more gender neutral documents. Every reference is him, her, his, he, he then, you know, council person, not he, council men. So if there, in, in, as you're preparing these documents going forward, if we could strive to have a little bit more gender neutral language, because who knows, five years from now, it may be an all-female council, or uh, we may have a female mayor. Yeah. Who knows, but you know, you don't want to have to go through a charter change every t just because the people involved are of a different gender. Uh, the couple, one other thing I wanted to also bring up, uh, look at section 1.3, form of government. It states all powers of the town shall be vested in, in an elective council. I'm sure that may be a typo, since you all are not optional. I think you want to say that you're an elective council. That's a little bit picky. Um, also, at, in the same section, it talks about the uh, town manager serving at will. In some places, it says he's serving at will. In some places, he's serving at the pleasure. Those things have very different meanings in HR. So my suggestion would be that you guys convert it as vacant. Decide what you're going to do and use consistent language throughout whatever amendments you're going to submit. And lastly, and this is for you as a council, uh, when we start talking about chain of command, uh, the, you got a mayor, you got a town council, you got a vice mayor.